Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. Today we're going to look at a process that the sign makers use called masking or stenciling to really add another dimension to V-carving. Let's get started. Here's how this process works. Let's say we're doing a sign. Normally we paint the surface of the sign material and we let the paint cure. Then we actually apply a masking or a stenciling material, which is thin plastic. It has a backing. When we peel the backing off, it has adhesive on it. We press that on the surface and make sure all the bubbles are out. That's the mask. Then we come in and we do our 3D engraving. All right, now we might hand paint the engraving. We might spray it. In some cases, we might not do anything. We might let the material be the, the contrasting color. But let's say that we spray it. So we spray that finish on there. We let it dry. When we peel the mask off, we have just beautiful lines and edges, things that you, you really couldn't get with a brush. So that's the whole process, and it has a lot of applications. So we're going to look into that in this video. All right, now let's look at the software. The program we're using is VCAR Pro, and it's, this starts out like any VCAR project. You do the setup first, and I'll show you how I did that. Okay, the blank I have is 48 inches wide and 32 inches high. Uh, I mic the thickness, it's 1.54, we're in inches, and that we're gonna touch off, so that means that's where Z0 is set at the machine bed, which is the same as the top of the spoil board. The lower left corner is the origin, that's this, that's what makes it line up correctly with our machine, and then we save all that. All right, now, the next thing is I get my graphic, and so what I did here is I actually got the Shop Saber logo, and I decided, okay, I wanna make this a certain size, and, and so I just scaled it till I got it to fit. So here's what this, that size is. This outside piece is 30 inches by 18, and then there's a, a three or four inches in here. So that's what we start with. Okay, now let's talk about how do we tool path it. Well, let's go to tool pass. The first thing we're gonna do is the V-car part, and, and let's do this. Let's open this up. Here's how I set that. All right, so basically I said, okay, I want the, I, I want the, de the a flat depth. Now, here, what you have to worry about when you have wider letters, uh, the depth is determined by the 90 degree angle of the cutter and also how wide the lines are. So typically we'd say, okay, I don't go deeper than such and such. In our case, we're gonna start at zero. We're gonna go to a quarter inch deep. And then these are the tools. So the V-bit is actually a, a Vortex uh, V-bit. It's a single flute and that's the number. And I just named it that. Here's, here's what the settings are. Okay, and one of the things we're, we're, that's real critical when you cut these materials is how fast is the tool spinning and how big is the chip load. And anytime you're using a material that you're not familiar with, call a tool supplier and ask them. That's what I did before I started cutting this stuff. I said, what RPM should I use? What chip load works? And they gave me some guidance and it turned out it worked really well. All right, now, but now, I, because I'm cutting flat depth, I'm also using clearance tools. I'm using two of them. The first one is a half inch bit and it's designed to produce a perfectly flat bottom, all right? But a half inch doesn't get into all the inside corners, so then I come back and follow up with a quarter inch bit. And of course, that's all done in, in the setup. And I'm gonna do climb cuts and pretty much that's it. So when I calculate that, there's what I get. Turn those off and look, let's look at the simulation. So I start here. And I said, what's this tool gonna do? That's gonna be that half inch tool. So that's what's gonna look like when it's done. That's what it's cut, all right? And you notice it's, the, it's not in tight corners or anything. Then next, it's gonna load that quarter inch tool. Now that cleans it back up. And finally, it's gonna bring the V-bit out. And that's what, how it finishes it. And then the last thing we need to do is to cut the sign out. Now this is an inch and a half, so you typically can't cut that deep. So what I do is a rough pass. Let's open up that, look, it's a half inch tool. We're going about a, a 10 thousandths through the material. We're gonna do it in three passes. And I'm leaving 15 thousandths. So when you see that allowance, a positive value means you're cutting over size. So you're leaving, you're leaving material to be machined off in another operation, all right? And so uh, we calculate that. 
it's warning me I'm cutting through the material, which is okay. And when I simulate it, that's what that looks like. Now we're going to go back. And I actually took that same tool path and made a couple changes. One is I got rid of the allowance and I changed it to a single pass. And then that became the finish pass. So now it goes around there in full depth and it gives you a really, really nice finish. So that's the rough pass finish pass concept. And we hit that and we'll simulate that cut. You can't really see it because it's 15,000. That's what our sign's gonna look like. So we run the simulation, everything looks good. It's what I thought it was gonna be. I've saved everything. My last step then is to generate the G-code and then that gets sent out to the machine. Now we're ready to go to the machine and actually make this sign. We've turned the machine on, I've gone through the homing procedure. Now it's ready to put the material on the table and turn the vacuum on. If the tool pad for V-carving has a flat depth, one or more straight bits may be used for the larger flat areas. Once the flat areas are defined, the V-bit is used to create the carving and produce the square corners that really make it V-carving.
finally, the outside of the shape is defined. Since our material is so thick, we're going to do a roughing passes followed by a finish pass. That'll give us a better edge finish. Our sign has just come back from the paint shop, and as you can tell, we decided to paint the V-carving with contrasting colors. Now, when you pull that mask off, it really shows how sharp the contours are and how powerful that mask process is. Another option might be to use the gold leaf effect for the V-carving. Now, something else to it, because the Shop Saber CNC's cut so well, you can actually let the raw material be the contrasting color. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. The concept of stencil masking lets you really create some unusual effects with your Shop Saber CNC router. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.